Okay, I wanted to do a separate video on this microphone cord. I got a new microphone. I think it's working pretty good. Okay. So, uh, I was going to do a video on the book Across Atlantic Ice and go over point by point what I think may be wrong with the hypothesis and things in the book that are mentioned. Uh, I, I finished the book. It was an audio book. I listened to the whole thing, except toward the end when they had their concluding statements, I actually fell asleep, okay? <laughs> um, and I didn't re-listen to it. I, uh, since I listened to the whole book, I didn't really need to re-listen to the different statements at the end to support their hypothesis. Those statements at the end were also a collection of hypothesis hypotheses that were, um, you know, many were far-fetched, some were unfounded, some of them were good, you know, but uh, I just, I couldn't deal with it. So anyway, I'm not going to tell you exactly uh, what I think will debunk this, 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 the hypothesis. Uh, I think it's more productive that I show you how to think scientifically. Now, I'm not an expert scientist or anything like that. I did go to school for engineering. I was accepted to the School of Engineering at University of Texas. I went four years to that program. I figured out I didn't want to crunch numbers for the rest of my life and check documents and check this, check that, and put an engineer stamp on it, so I, I quit uh, after four and a half years. Yeah, And then I went back to school to be a draftsman. So my trade is drafting, Okay, but I do have an engineering background, so I did both uh, in my career. I did both drafting and engineering work. Okay, so I'm familiar with the scientific method. And I was kind of lucky in college because I did not go through any of the modern philosophy courses and all that. I was strictly physics and mathematics for the most part. Okay, chemistry. Uh, so I had a, a solid background in science, which I'm so glad I did. Okay, so that's my background. Uh, you can take it for what it's worth. It's it's um, it's something that uh, I take very seriously. I take take the uh, scientific method very seriously. Um, in my career, everything had to be very precise, very accurate. Uh, it was all drawings, all specifications, interpretations of uh, manuals and stuff like that. I had to search through all these things these manuals to pick out the vital information that I could apply to uh, the shop that I was working in, okay, and apply it to the drawings, make sure everything was accurate. Okay, so you get the idea. So that's where I'm coming from here. So I'm going to actually try to show you how to think instead of trying to go through and do book reviews. I was going to go through various books and do reviews. I still might do that to some extent, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, uh, like other channels do where they they'll read something from the book and then they'll bring up some other contrary evidence or supporting evidence or whatever I'm not going to argue any cases I'm just going to show you how to think okay uh, the most important thing I think you should research is a guy named Karl Popper okay now he's not well known but he's one of the most influential scientists of the 20th century he was alive during Einstein's time and era during that uh, revolutionizing of uh, physics. Okay, he was from Germany. A lot, all of his works are in, original works are in German, but he has translated some of those into English. It's kind of hard to read. It's a little bit dense in some cases. Uh, he's got several books. And I'm trying to go through those. Those, I, I don't have any audio books. I have to read through those, so it's kind of slow. But so far, so good. I've, I've uh, been able to pick up my reading pace now that I have more energy. So I should be done with those in this coming year. And that's my goal for 2019, to read all of Karl Popper's works. Okay, And the main idea, uh, he was a scientist and philosopher, or a physicist and philosopher, um, his main idea was the idea of falsification, okay? And what that means is uh, a hypothesis needs to be tested for the possibility of error, 
or being false. Uh, a hypothesis needs to be tested in such a way that you're trying to create um, an avenue of failure, okay? Uh, so that you can, you can improve the hypothesis. You can say that, uh, for example, uh, Clovis people were different than the population surrounding them. They were a different ethnic group. Okay, that's a hypothesis. Now, uh, hypotheses, are, hypotheses are fine. You know, actually, I've got some notes here. Uh, supporting evidence is not required, really, to make a hypothesis. What is required, what evidence should be used for, is to debunk or to try to falsify the hypothesis. Do we have evidence that shows that Clovis people were not ethnically different? Do we have evidence for that? Uh, we may have some evidence, but I don't, I don't think so. I don't think we have evidence in either w situation, which makes the argument kind of uh, fruitless at this point. Okay? Now, uh, I got off on a little tangent there, but I think you get the, the basic idea of falsification, okay? You're trying to bring evidence to falsify the hypothesis. It doesn't matter where it comes from. A hypothesis really doesn't need evidence at all. You can just say something, and if there is something wrong with it, then you can come up with something better. Okay? Now, there are many hypotheses built on previous evidence, previous research, previous data, and that's fine, too. And then you, set, you submit it for review, or uh, you review it yourself. Okay? A lot of times, uh, you'll notice as you read various studies and uh, various articles that all this supporting evidence is given for the hypothesis but no contrary evidence is given or maybe weak con contrary evidence is given and that's it. Uh, they're trying to make the case to support their hypothesis but that's not a scientific way of doing things. Uh, to establish Consensus is also not scientific. You get lots of support from people and experts to back you up. To have a consensus is not scientific. What you should be doing is getting all those people to try to find a mistake in your hypothesis, not give you support. So Karl Popper made a distinction between science and pseudoscience. If you're not pursuing falsification, you are conducting pseudoscience. Real science is about trying to falsify the hypothesis. Now, uh, some of you might be saying, well, what if you, you know, if you just say something that's true, it's just true no matter what, you know? Yeah. Um, if you have a hypothesis that cannot be falsified, it just seems to be written in stone, uh, or there is just really no way to test it, it just seems to be true, it's really not going to be useful in a scientific argument or a scientific pursuit. So something that can't be falsified, whether it is evidence or a hypothesis, is rather useless for a scientific pursuit. It can be used in pseudoscience, and those things are always used in politics and other argumentation, okay? But for science itself, we are dealing, we should be dealing with ideas, and hypotheses that can be falsified in some way, that can be tested to see if there's an error. Now in mathematics, I know some of you are thinking, 2 plus 2 is 4, that cannot be falsified. Well, you can try it. You can try to see if 2 and 2 ever equals anything other than 4. You can take little marbles and add 2 and 2 together and all that kind of stuff, and yeah, sure enough, it, it does work. Well, I can't come up with a better hypothesis, and that is the answer. But the point is, it can be tested. There is a way that you can verify it through testing to see if there is a way to make it false or to find some glitch. Maybe the way you define it can be falsified, which means you need to improve the definition. That's another way, and so forth. Okay, so... Uh, let me just look at, see what I've got else in my notes here. 
I think you get the idea on the falsification principle, okay? Uh, I encourage you to look at raw data, okay? Do not depend on someone else to interpret the data for you. Now, I know that uh, there are some areas that are beyond most people like statistics. A statistician is going to know how to collect data and make statistics that is, it's beyond me and it's beyond most people. And they will come up with these statistics. Now, what you have to try to decide in that case is whether it's relevant to what you're trying to prove or disprove. Okay. Uh, don't take much stock in statistics. No, uh, that's my advice. Look at the raw data. In archaeology, there's limited raw data. You'll find that most of these sites have very little raw data, very little um, actual record keeping that is uh, that rounds out the argument that they're trying to make. You know, there's very tiny bits of evidence for this or that, and they try to weave it together with uh, rational arguments, okay? Uh, through rationalism or, or justificationism. You can look up those terms. Uh, that's not the scientific way. So look at the data yourself and see if you can figure out um, what you want to find out from the data. Okay, if you can't, which most of the time you won't be able to, that's fine. As long as you're familiar with the data and find it, some of it's expensive and is behind paywalls or you have to buy books on it or you have to uh, talk to people in person because it's not available, that's fine. But just look for raw data. Okay, something else here before I wrap up. Um, I think that's it. Uh, the important thing to remember is in today's uh, arguments, a lot of times, especially on social media, social media and other platforms, uh, they bring politics into the argument. Uh, they try to bring all the supporting evidence uh, in support of their arguments. Uh, and if you make a statement, they want to see your supporting evidence. Okay, remember uh, that's pseudoscience. Okay. Real science is, let's talk about the evidence that may be contrary to my statement. Okay, uh, like with, when I look at statements, I used to get all bent out of shape about, oh, that's not right. I mean, where, what's the evidence for this stuff? Because I was in, in the same boat. Uh, we're all trained in kind of a courtroom type mentality where you bring your evidence supporting your case and argue your case and then the other lawyer brings his case, argue his case, and then either the judge or the jury decides. But in science, that's not how it works, okay? You bring forth your statement, uh, you show your experiment that perhaps supports your statement. Like, I, like in archery, I fired a, an arrow uh, at 200 yards and the speed was such and such, okay? And the weight of the arrow is such and such, and the poundage of the bow is such and such. And it achieves such and such penetration on, uh, let's say, a mid-sized deer, okay? Uh, for our purposes, and most of the stuff that we'll be doing will be related to archery. So you conducted a test. Uh, it can be repeated by other people. They repeat it. You repeat it. You try to find a way th that maybe you were wrong in your assessment, and then you can discuss any errors. Uh, well, I didn't get that result. Okay, let's discuss it. What did you do in your test? Maybe it was different from mine. Maybe I conducted my test incorrectly. Uh, you shouldn't build a case that said, well, I shot this thing a hundred thousand times, so therefore I'm the expert on how to shoot the deer in this particular way. And, you know, there's no arguing with that because who can argue with 100,000 shots, right? Or it's been, it's been done this way from time immemorial and it's just the way it is because of all the supporting evidence. All the experts say it's this way. All the time involved say it's this way. Uh, it's just this way. That's not science. That's pseudoscience, okay? Science is you bring a hypothesis no matter how well it's supported or not and try to see if there's errors. Okay, I think you get the idea. 
And uh, I think this will save a lot of time. Well, for me it will, but for you too, I think. Uh, and it might get frustrating reading a lot of this stuff that's put out these days. Uh, a lot of terminology also is is foreign. Uh, some of these archaeologists are uh, working in these little echo chambers where they, they know how to talk to each other in these... Um, in, in ways that we can't understand because it's, there's just jargon in there and ways of speaking that are different from the normal population. So uh, other than that, uh, reading the archaeological texts is very interesting. Uh, I, I, rec I do recommend it and look at the raw data. Uh, study uh, falsification and um, I think you'll be okay as far as reviewing these books for yourself. Uh, and you'll be knowing where I'm coming from uh, when I do my reviews or when I look at a certain technique and I try to explain the rationale of why I think it was used or why it wasn't used and so forth. Okay, that's it.